Ketamine is an anesthetic adjunct and analgesic. It suppresses breathing much less than other anesthetics. Ketamine acts primarily by binding to NMDA receptors in the brain and spinal cord. NMDA receptors are a major postsynaptic ionotropic receptor for the excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate. GABAergic inhibitory interneurons within the cortex, limbic system, and hippocampus regions of the brain have these NMDA receptors. These inhibitory interneurons normally work to control excitatory actions in the brain. However, when ketamine is administered at low to moderate doses, it serves to bind to and block these NMDA receptors. By blocking the activity at these inhibitory interneurons, they no longer provide inhibitory signals to the downstream excitatory neurons they communicate with. Without inhibition, these excitatory neurons become disinhibited and are allowed to become more active, leading to an altered arousal state consisting of aberrant excitatory activity. This increase in activity may seem counter to the process of inducing anesthesia, but it is achieving an anesthetic effect. Rather than suppressing communication, it is thought that ketamine allows brain regions such as the cortex, hippocampus, and amygdala to continue communicating, but with less modulation and control from the inhibitory interneurons. In this case, information might continue to be processed, but without proper coordination in space and time. That would make sense considering the hallucinations, dissociative states, euphoria, and dysphoria commonly observed with low-dose ketamine. While ketamine's action on the inhibitory neurons in the cortex is postulated to be the primary effect, there are other interactions suggested to occur as well. Knowing that ketamine's effect on the brain results in increased cerebral metabolic rate, increased cerebral blood flow, and hallucinations, what would you predict the EEG looks like for ketamine-induced anesthesia? Low-dose ketamine is associated with an active EEG signal. The EEG for patients receiving ketamine typically consists of fast oscillations in the high beta, low gamma frequency range, around 25 to 32 hertz. The pattern may take a couple of minutes after the initial ketamine dose to appear. A slow delta oscillation is also present in the EEG during low-dose ketamine delivery. However, compared to the propofol and inhaled ether-derived anesthetics, this slow delta oscillation is less regular in appearance. Processed EEG-based depth of anesthesia indices tend to have problems when ketamine is administered. These indices tend to associate low-frequency EEG patterns with a more unconscious state. While this is true for drugs like propofol and sibuflurane, it is not true for ketamine. By the nature of how ketamine affects the brain, it produces high-frequency EEG activity when it is working to alter consciousness. The processed EEG depth of anesthesia monitors do not differentiate between drugs, so they tend to observe this 30 Hz activity and display higher numerical index values for ketamine-induced anesthesia, even though the patient may be quite well anesthetized. This is one of the many benefits of using the EEG waveform and spectrogram to monitor brain states during general anesthesia and sedation. Please visit the associated course to earn CME and learn more about the use of the EEG for anesthesia practices.